My name is Mark McCombs. I'm a senior lecturer in the mathematics department at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. One of the classes I teach um, most semesters is a first year seminar on math and art. And students really like the unit where we cover uh, some of the work of M.C. Escher. And what we do is we explore how much of his work incorporates the notion of symmetry operations, especially in creating tessellations. And we also pay attention to how in some of those tessellations, he explores different ways to depict infinity. There's really only four different symmetries. There's uh, translation, which you could think of as sliding the shape across uh, along a certain line, a certain distance. There's rotation around uh, a fixed point through a given angle. There's reflection across a mirror. And then there's sort of a combination of sliding and reflecting called glide reflecting. And Escher's piece, Reptiles, he applies these four basic symmetry operations, but uh, he puts them together in a design called a tessellation. And what a tessellation does is it fills the space, fills a two-dimensional space in such a way that the tiles fit together without edges overlapping and with no gaps. So Escher's uh, circle limit four, this, this devils and angels tessellation, lives inside of a disk. And this disk is what Escher uses as his template for this tessellation. And hyperbolic geometry, the model that uses this disk, one of the fundamental principles is as you move farther away from the center of the disk, lines don't look straight anymore. They really are lines. They're the shortest distance between two points in that world, but they start to look curved. And the closer you get to the edge of the disk, the more curved those lines appear. My favorite piece by M.C. Escher is Print Gallery. He explores this notion of, of the infinite, but the infinity takes the form of someone looking at an image, and in the image, he sees himself looking at the image of himself looking at himself.